Hello, I'm Jonathan Mast, and welcome to this edition of the Sedgwick Podcast. We have a great guest today to talk about modern methods of construction. Mike Bieber is a chartered building surveyor with Sedgwick. And Mike, uh, thanks for being with us. You want to just give a quick overview of of your background and experience uh, before we jump into this topic? Yeah, hi, Jonathan. Uh, I'm a chartered building surveyor. I work with uh, Cedric's in the major loss department, so we deal with all the um, major claims for large insurers um, and deal with everything from fires to floods. Um, And historically, I've dealt, worked in uh, public and private sector, and more recently uh, with the uh, modular developments uh, in, in the London region. And how long have you been doing this? Um, I guess you could say for the last 30 years, um, but um, and I've been working in modular in the modular world for about the last 10 years. So when we say modular construction or modular methods of construction, for our listeners who are not familiar, and I would be one of those, um, tell us a little bit more about it. What are the main advantages and disadvantages when people take uh, this this on? Okay, so I think we're familiar with what traditional building techniques are with where bricks and mortar and timber are taken to a building site and the walls and foundations and the roofs are put together element by element. Over the last hundred years or so, we've been using this technique and uh, I think we're fairly familiar with that as a a concept. It's worked very well. It's well maintained. Um, buildings can be can last for many many years. Um, the things have moved on a little bit in in, in recent years, and um, and modern methods of construction or MMC is a bit like the conveyor belt system you'd find in a car manufacturing plant, where uh, a part of the building is assembled and then moved along the conveyor system, and then another part is put together and then moved along the conveyor system. So that you effectively come up with a rectangular box which someone can live in and then you can put that on the back of a low loader lorry, take that to site and assemble it within a building. So that's kind of a more modern way of assembling somewhere to live or work depending on what the use of the building is. To give you an idea, these sorts of modules can be formed in a variety of materials but actually a common material now is a steel frame with a reinforced concrete base and ceiling. Um, And all of the uh, elements within that box, um, say kitchens, bathrooms, uh, bedrooms, floor finishes, lighting, um, and are all assembled within the factory. So there's very little um, work that needs to be done on site so it's got a lot of control of it inside the factory. So just to run through some of the advantages of MNC, um, we just touched on there for a little bit, that the, the high quality control uh, of that you have during the manufacturing process um, and the, the low amount of waste that you have um, during the production of the modules. Um, one also advantage of MMC is, is, is generally unaffected by the weather. So on a normal building site, if it's uh, you've got a frost or extreme weather pattern, work will stop. Whereas if you're in a, co- a climate controlled factory, um, work can carry on and the program can be unaffected and, and the modules can carry on being produced. Another, another advantage of MMC is the uh, increased energy efficiency and ease of design change during the life of the module. So if, if, if there's a change in legislation, and uh, say for example, the insulation needs to be denser or a different material needs to be used, that can be adapted quite quickly in a factory, whereas on site that's a harder thing to change. So um, I'll, I'll Overall, the advantages for MNC over traditional is the speed and efficiency that the buildings can be produced. 
which equals a saving in time and costs and minimizes any delay in the program. Um, there's also a, a great benefit in reducing the carbon footprint uh, of every building, which is a drive that we are all, all in, in this industry trying to reduce um, with producing um, modules in one factory and reducing the number of people traveling to one site backwards and forwards um, with the delivering of materials and also building that, that particular building. So um, there's a lot of clear advantages there. Um, there are some disadvantages to MMC and, and um, supply chain issues is probably one of the, the bigger issues uh, where there are supply chain issues. Um, so materials that get held up at um, ports or, or the run low and they are critical on the production line, that can have an effect on production of the modules and can affect the program ultimately. Another disadvantage for MMC is, is the consumer perception of MMC. Um, historically, we've, we've over the 50s and 60s, we saw prefabricated buildings in the UK uh, were quite uh, drafty, leaky, um, and, and I think we're familiar with the historical problems with prefabricated buildings. So that's um, more of a consumer perception that we can need to overcome because the modern um, modules are, are, are much better and, and produced a much higher standard than those in the past. And I suppose the, the, the only other real disadvantage of MMC is the high upfront investment uh, for investors to set up the factory um, and the installation of the production line. Um, there's quite a high level of risk and uh, high, high investment setting that up uh, before modules can be produced and any income can be generated from the um, delivery of those modules. Uh, I, that's, to me, that's pretty fascinating. And we were talking a little bit earlier offline. You, uh, uh, maybe a visual or analogy is you were saying this is almost similar to Legos when this all comes together, referencing the childhood toy. Yeah, I guess you could look at it as Lego blocks. Um, I think we're all familiar with Lego blocks, where they go together. Um, and modular construction is not is not too dissimilar to that. It's, it's a simplified form, but if you take a rectangular Lego block and you place one on top of the other, um, that's very similar to how we would form a, mod, a modular building, even high-rise. Um, some of the the highest that um, are being produced at the moment go up to a, about 30 stories. So that's that's quite an achievement. Um, it's got a central core, which is everything's tied to, so they're not waving around in the wind. But, uh, you know, that's the general principle of, of how the modules are um, fabricated and then and then installed on site. That is, that's really cool. Well, what... What is the status of modern construction in the UK specifically? Where where does that where does that stand as far as production and numbers and other parts of the world even? Yeah, well, essentially we we are there's a shortage of demand on on all of our buildings in the UK from everything from hospitals, factories um, to residential buildings. So to give you an example, the annual target for 2025 um, is around 300,000 homes. Um, and last year, 2022, we only got up to 192,000 homes, so we're, we're pretty way short of where we should be. Um, of those 300,000, or sorry, of those 192,000, about 15,000 were modular homes, and that's expected to rise annually up to about 20,000 homes by 2025. So there is a demand for this. Um, if you compare that to Europe, um, they prefabricate about 428,000 homes in 2022. So as you can see, it's a much bigger industry in Europe. Um, and also if you compare it to places like Japan, they produce around 132,000 prefabrications a year. 
which represents about 15% of their new housing stock. So globally, um, the, the construction of new modular homes is expected to increase by about 8% over the next five years. So it's an it's a, a, the industry that is, is getting bigger, it's becoming more popular, it's being adopted. And a lot of the past preconceptions and, and ideas about what MMC is all about are being lost and, and it's being adopted globally. Um, and it it's actually forms part of the UK government's target and plan to decarbonise the industry um, by 2050. And we're all being encouraged to drive electric cars and, and to improve the air quality and to and, and this is just part of um, the, the overall plan to decarbonise the, not only the, the building industry, but the, you know, the, man, man, the way we transport people around the country as well. Well, we've got, we've got the what it is, how it works. So now, getting to the heart of things with what you do, what, what risks should insurers and brokers be aware of when assessing developments built using, uh, using MMC? Well, it's a good question because MMC, whilst there are lots of advantages and it sounds fantastic, as with every new form of construction, there are, of course, risks. And, and brokers and insurers are used to assessing risk um, when they're looking at developments. If we take um, a high-rise block of residential flats, for example, and if you put that in a residential built-up area, it may not be that built up when you first um, build the uh, constructor tower, for example. Um, and after a while, more buildings pop up around it, and that may create a situation where if there is a claim, if there is a repair that needs to be done as part of an insurance, insurance claim, it may be difficult to gain access to that building and repair that element of the building. So give you an example. If you had a 20-story residential block and there was a fire on the 17th story and the compartmentation within that particular unit has done its job, everyone was safe, but there is a requirement to completely repair and replace large sections of that not only the cladding, but also internally. Um, due to its design, there is an inherent risk there on the costs involved in dealing with that particular building. This is something that brokers and insurers need to review as part of their assessment of the development. There are other, there are other aspects of risk that they, they need to consider. Um, Material-specific risks are also um, something that they should consider when looking at development. So, for example, a lot of developers will go to one particular kitchen manufacturer and say that we need 150 kitchens for this particular block of, that we're developing. And it may be a certain size and a certain dimension and, the, and they may not be compatible with others. So as the life of the building goes on and certain claims come up, for escape of water or fires or whatever, replacing those kitchens during that um, during that part of the claim, it, it, it may cause um, difficulty in, in replacing that item and, and matching up elements of that kitchen. So that's another you know specific risk which is is common with modular construction. Um, Modular construction also has some inherent design risks built into it. Where we described the Lego blocks on top of each other earlier, those Lego blocks cause or create very small voids um, which are inaccessible. And in the event that there is um, fire water or escape of water, um, there are pockets that where that can sit and they are inaccessible. So, you know, deconstruction of those areas and those voids can be quite costly and can be quite difficult and require specialist um, skills and specialist professionals to deal with 
those um, elements of the claim. Um, specifics, we are, we, we are up adapting to ensure that we're up to speed on these sorts of developments and, and advising brokers insurers on uh, specific risks with MMC and developments. Um, and so you, you can see that there are inherent risks within this particular uh, construction. Well, when we think about the broader use, uh, can modular construction be used uh, in buildings for other industries? Uh, what's the future look like uh, as far as that goes? Yeah, I really think that the future of MMCs is um, is the way the, the building industry needs to be looking at uh, not just residential, but lots of other areas. So uh, healthcare, education, uh, office buildings, even temporary buildings, um, they, they all need to meet the you know, changing building regulations that we are committed to over the, over the next 20, 30 years to meet the 2050 targets. Um, but I think MMC is in a good position to do that in, in all of the industries because it's so adaptable uh, and it's so flexible it uses um, BIM, BIM technology, um, so it's all on a CAD system and can be very carefully adapted for each design, for each industry, and and to develop um, those um, parts of the, the building to suit um, the, the industry um, requirements. Well, as we reach the end of our discussion and close out um, you know, we're talking a little bit about the future of MMC um, probably the biggest question or one of the biggest questions is how should ins insurers be assessing proposals as they come in and what do they need to know yes yeah, great question because MMC has an enormous potential and it is a growing sector so we are going to be seeing a lot more of these buildings um, and there are inevitably going to be insurance claims dealing with these sorts of buildings. So what brokers and insurers need to understand is the, the inherent design risks within these developments um, and the strengths and weaknesses with the types of construction. Um, we've, we've talked about some of the advantages and disadvantages of building the modular um, buildings, but once they are in position and people are living in them and working in them, inevitably there are going to be times when there's going to be claims, there's going to be a damage to those uh, modules or damage to those aspects of the building that need to be repaired. So I think it's, it's, it's important that brokers and insurers understand the risks um, and evaluate what the potential costs are um, and, and how those may affect premiums on, on particular developments. Um, and the earlier that they identify those uh, in the process, um, the less pain it is later on uh, when claims uh, are, are arise. Well, Mike, I appreciate all this information, and it, it sounds, you know, the future is certainly going to, going to expand and grow, uh, so there's going to be more and more uh, knowledge I'm sure that, that you'll bring, and we hope you'll come back again and be on the podcast as this uh, as this segment grows and evolves. Uh, and if our listeners want to learn more, they can always visit com and check out the resources there. And, then, of course, uh, Mike Bieber, our expert, and uh, different ways to reach you. So, Mike, uh, thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it. That's fine. Thank you for having me. Well, until next time, listeners, uh, have a great day.